We believe that videos, images, words, and sounds have the absolute power to inform, inspire, and entertain. We are united under the virtues of safety and knowledge. We are a training community of learners and teachers who encourage and energize each other to achieve greatness. We are pilots, videographers, photographers, freelancers, business owners, enthusiasts, experts, and apprentices. We are creators. We are the Drone Youth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. I'm your frivolous host today. My name is Paul. Frivolous? Yeah. That's a little disconcerting. And I'm Rob, <laughs> and you're listening to episode number 316. Thank you so much, as always, for spending a few minutes of your day with us. We really do appreciate it. We really do, and I really am frivolous. That's why you haven't given me a company card yet. So <laughs> yeah. just wanted to clarify that one. Uh, anyway, it is a beautiful day here in New Mexico. It's a bright, sunny five, bright and sunny, 75 degrees. You know, my brain... Or at least it will be. That's true. My brain really works faster than my mouth sometimes. It's kind of one of those things i got to work on. So, but it's and like... And just be you, Paul. Just be me. Just be you. Just be me. Mr. Right. Nice Paul. So next week is NAB. I actually have some news I have to read on the podcast. I forgot to Can't tell wait. you. Can't wait. Let's do um, it. The AMA actually wrote an email uh, yep. yesterday. If you're hearing this, the email went out a few days ago. Um, and the AMA is really worried about what's going on in the Senate. Big surprise. But I will say this. Hey, they're taking some action. That's good. Well, you know, I was thinking about that, right? Because I've talked kind of negatively about the AMA hmm. in recent podcasts because... Well, I kind of feel it represents the overarching theme of what's going on with the AMA. But if it wasn't for the AMA, we wouldn't get these emails. So thank you, AMA. Thank you, Rich Hansen. And they have a pretty wide reach, obviously. Yeah, they do. They need to really step up their actions, though. I mean, they really need to stop bending over backwards. Um, so, all right, the email. Member call to action. The U.S. Senate is currently considering amendments to the Federal Aviation Administration Reauthorization Act of 2016. We need your help today to ensure this proposed legislation fully protects the model aircraft community. Like mm -hmm. you guys have done that before. Anyway, uh, as you know, we are pleased that the Senate's proposed legislation <laughs> preserves a community-based approach Shank. to managing the recreational community by maintaining the special rule for model aircraft. However, at the same time, we are concerned with additional provisions in this bill that could det detrimentally impact our community. Oh, man. My email thing is a little... It's hard to read. It's small. Um, these new provisions would require all UAS, including model aircraft, to meet new FAA design and production standards and impose unnecessary regulation on hobbyists who often build their own models at home. This bill would also require modelers to obtain permission from air traffic control when flying within five miles of towered airports, which could jeopardize hundreds of existing flying sites. And if passed, the bill would require model aircraft enthusiasts to take an online FAA safety test and carry proof of passing the test when flying. These new directives would undermine the model aircraft activity and detract from the creativity, innovation, and enjoyment of the hobby. By supporting Senators Inhofe's Amendment Number 3596, you can help stop this from happening. This critical amendment would maintain the basic intent of the Senate proposed legislation while lessening the negative impact on the model aircraft community. As always, thank you for your support, blah, 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 blah. Sincerely, Government Affairs. So uh, they also have a link that you can urge your senators to support that amendment, 3596. There's a link in it. Uh, if I go to that link and open it up on Force Touch, it's funny, they actually have an analytic here, so they're measuring how many people click this. Um, it's just on the AMA website, right? Your senators, they give you a, a area to put your zip, zip code, code. Yep. and you can call your senator. Guys, it is really important to call your senator. Although with, you know, this is my first time reading this email and it makes me think, um, I know this is, uh, America and I know that our political theory is wrong in, in the sense that, 
Um, our government is oftentimes slow to catch up to technology, and oftentimes they overregulate and then they provide rules later on where yeah. we're just re-regulating. Mm-hmm. And, and there's a name for this in political Well, the problem theory. is they have all these regulations that they understand probably aren't the right ones. They just add more. Yeah. Instead of taking away the wrong ones. So why don't we just take away this provision out of this reauthorization act? That's kind of my question. And since right. we don't have Rich Hansen or anyone uh, to answer those questions, it's kind of difficult. Um, but I would say, guys, it's really important. Right now is a really, really, really important time frame um, to make your voice heard. You've got to be meeting with your senators. You've got to be meeting. Uh, and it's funny. We, this is all switched. We were at, w- at one time calling our congressmen. Now we're calling our senators because it seems that Congress couldn't get anything done. And now the Senate's writing the bill. Let's cl- clarify something. You just said you've got to be meeting with your senators. Calling. Calling. Communicating. Communicating with. Okay, I just want to make that clear because the reality is people are not going to go meet with them. They're not going to reach out and try to meet with them. They probably wouldn't be able to. That's true. But you definitely can call them. You can email them. Morse code. You can write them. You can, if you're really, well, so if you have a big model plane, you can pull a sign behind it, right? <laughs> so Actually, that would be really cool. <laughs> if all of the modelers, like if a thousand modelers got together and they were like, uh, you know, sue the FAA. FAA Reauthorization Act is dumb. Let modelers fly. <laughs> dumb. And it was just like <laughs> this parade of planes going through the sky. <laughs> like, like, and everyone's it. like, oh man, that's a political message. Is that a P 51 up there? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you get the point. Reach out, take action, be a part of the process. Definitely. Definitely be a part of that process. If you care. Well, I think and everyone I think who do. I think everyone who listens to the podcast definitely cares. Yeah. Um, you know, it's disconcerting uh, that there are so many people out there for uh, th- so many people out there that are operating haphazardly, and that's the thing is that with this mass proliferation of drones, for a while, people were like, "Well, there's going to be so many people operating outside of what." The FAA or AMA ever says because there are, and we both know of. Oh yeah, instances too often. Well, e- you know, even the Dave story yesterday, he went to that security conference, and this guy is building security drones, and he's like, "All you need is a three, three, three. and Dave's like, "What about your pilot's license or the one oh seven? And the guy's face was like, "One oh seven? What's that?" <laughs> And you're like, oh, it's, man. It's interesting. So don't be that guy. I mean, this that was actually really just amazing, if not appalling, that somebody so ingrained in the drone industry and Has community no idea. had not heard of the 107. There's really no excuse I for that. I think that that really represents a greater sample of people who are buying drones. Though. It may, but it does not represent our listeners, nope. which we're very pr- uh, thankful for. And would encourage you guys to, to, again, be a part of the process. Definitely. Uh, Well, let's get into today's question. Uh, Guys, thank you for listening in. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. We are needing some of your questions. So bring those in and try to make it not about the 333. We're uh, kind of sick of it. Frankly, yeah. And it's it's funny. Every time I I, like we get a new instructor on, like we got a new instructor on yesterday and uh, he was like, well, I just I really want to make it clear how I feel about the 333s. (laughs) Before I come on to drone you, and I'm like, all right, hit me with it. Right. And he's like, I've been flying commercially for 20 years without a 333. Why do I all of a sudden have to need this paperwork that no one even listens to? He's like, I don't need it. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, it was just like, okay, uh, that's fine. And he's like, I know you push it for, you know, the more professional stuff, the higher end gigs. And he's yeah. like, and I totally understand why. Right. Because that perception is there. He's like, otherwise, I question the whole thing. And perception like, is reality. We all know that. That's true. And I was like, you it's know. It's not just a saying. Yeah, it's true. And I was like, you know what? Do your thing, man. I'm like, you and I feel the same way. So <laughs> anyway. But. Anyway, so that's, I'm going to leave that at that. And, and by the way, don't forget, guys, that we are doing the contest for a free annual membership giveaway. Draw, yeah. Drawing. Drawing. For question askers on podcasts 301 through 350. Awesome. So get your questions in. Be a part of that contest. You ever talk to Tiago? Yeah, I've been emailing Tiago. He's all set up. He's in. Because he won last time, right? He did win last time, and he's in the community and introduced himself last night. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, but anyways, t- excited to have him in because he's been kind of a friend of the podcast for a while. I realize that once you hit a certain number of notifications on Facebook, they just go away. Really? Yeah, I had that happen last night. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> it was like four ninety nine or something, and then just... Phew, go the algorithm away. says he's never getting to these. <laughs> Let's start over. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> anyway, uh, I will be in the Facebook community, though. For those members of you that are listening, it's just been a crazy week. NAB is coming up next week, so... Uh, I will try and spend time uh, with you guys this week and get that all taken care of. Which, by the way, we're going to be podcasting. I say we. I'm not going to be there, but Paul and John are going to be there next week and podcasting from there, right? That's right, yeah. So if you are wondering what's going on at NAB, you know this is the big conference where the drone makers release their new drones, their new cameras. It's the big yep. camera conference. Uh, B&H is going to be there. Red's going to be there. DJI is going to be there. 3DR is going to be there. Unique's going to be there. Uh, and we're going to do three separate podcasts, Rob. We're going to do one where we kind of do like a summary of what we've seen. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to do a podcast on all the new products that we saw. Sweet. And then we're going to do a comparison between two of the newest drones that we saw there. Or two of the biggest groundbreaking drones to hit the market. <laughs> That's going to be cool. Sorry. It's just every time... <laughs> Like there, uh, if you guys are familiar with the Demon Seed guy, he was like, the unique Typhoon H is a game changer, and now they're being sued for it, so must not have been that big of a game changer. Wait, sued? Unique is being sued for the Typhoon H. Oh, by DJI, you mean. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. right, right, okay. So how much of a game changer really is it? Yeah. Anyway, today's question is brought to you by... Are you a drone pilot? Are you operating under a Section 333 exemption? Then you may be familiar with Item 27 which requires you to get a property release for every flight over property. Legal Flyer is an app for iPhone and iPad that helps you create professional property releases in less time than it takes to do a pre-flight check. You can add your pilot info, you can sign in, hand it to the property owner for their signature. But wait a second. Legal Flyer's advanced integration automatically adds latitude, longitude, and even altitude. Then add a panorama straight from the app. Everything drops into a single page PDF you can share with a single tap. It's compliance at light speed. Visit LegalFlyer.com for more information or get it straight from the App Store. Legal Flyer, property releases for professional drone pilots. Hey, you guys. I would like to re- um, rephrase my question I made earlier about which drone to get that would be an all-around good drone for aerial videography, uh, for filming water sports and also doing real estate and other things like that. Um, I watched the... Uh, 20 ways to start making money with your drone on the uh, member uh, webinar replay and uh, you never did actually expound on why you did not prefer the Phantom 3. So I'd like to hear a little bit more about that and then also do you still prefer the 3DR Solo uh, over the Phantom 3 Professional or how? what is your thoughts on the 3DR Solo today as it stands today? Thanks for any input. Bye. I want to clarify really quick, Rob. Uh, he's watching a webinar from this time last year when we were at yep. NAB. We were the only ones to be able to fly the 3DR solo inside right. the cage, which at the time I loved it. I really did. It was extremely responsive, loved the remote, loved the interface, loved really everything about but it. But again, you loved the experience within a, what a... A size of this room. Yeah. Maybe a little but a little higher, but basically the size of this room, yeah. right? Um, and it was an amazing experience. I was very excited about the Solo, the smart features, its ability to fly much faster than the Phantom because for wakeboarding, the Phantom doesn't really cut it. Uh, I mean, even though they say in sport mode you can go 45, try controlling your camera and not having the props in at 45. So that's why I like the Inspire for that sure. reason. But anyway, uh, love the 3DR. We did that, you know, that YouTube uh, video on it, got mm-hmm. about 10,000 views. Um, and then it took me... What was it, June or July? Was it because I went to Wake Shredder? Summer sometime, yeah, yeah. I don't remember exactly. I went to Wake Shredder, which is my buddy Sean Cummings' wake surfing event, which is by far my favorite event of the whole summer. Um, and I actually met 3DR at the event mm-hmm. and flew with them, and they were extremely impressed with my ability to fly. But we were doing things we probably shouldn't have doing, like flying through floating bimini tops and stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know what a bimini top is. So but... on a boat, you have the bimini top, oh. which is like the shade. Okay, and we were flying between. Between the glass at windshield and that, wow. so uh, like at 200 yards away. <laughs> so anyway, these were parked boats. No one was in them. Anyway, um, not flying over people. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, and I made a great relationship with 3DR there. And then two months later, they sent the solo. I didn't have the gimbal. I took it to Canada with me to test yep. it out. I actually shot one of my most famous photos, or the one of the most photo, one of the photos that I'm most famous for, which is the Lake Life Forever photo with Caro. At oh, the end. with the. Is that on the dock. On the dock. Yeah. That was a that's an awesome photo. Yeah, it was it a really cool is. photo. No, I dig it. Yeah. So that was actually shot with the GoPro session. 
So oh wow yeah, but that which was probably was one of the three shots that you actually ever took used. with the session. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that worked out totally true. Uh, anyway, a month later after that, I got the gimbal. Uh, they sent me a gimbal. I installed the gimbal. I was getting massive shake in it. Like, which, by the way, before you ever got to that point, just flying the solo was a blast, oh, right? So much Fast, fun. Fast, responsive. So much fun. And this was out in the open, more realistic flying. Yeah. Oh, uh, and by the way, like, if it if you are doing a speed and agility test of solo versus Phantom Three, the solo blows the Phantom Three out of the water. Um, it's very simple as to why the motors are taller. They have more torque, so they're they have more power on low end. Um, they also have more power, more a little bit more power on the high end, yeah. um, but a lot less than on the low end. Um, anyway, that being said, I wasn't happy with the gimbal, so 3R sent me another solo with the gimbal already installed. Mm-hmm. So like, okay, maybe you know I messed it up or whatever. Right. Went out and flew it, and um, I still just had so much Jello in the camera, and the drone. Uh, it, I had a new firmware update and. You know, it was acting like it had Parkinson's. Like it was like right. Well, and in the meantime, so, Phantom's coming out with advanced cameras beyond the GoPro. Yeah, right? and that was the same time. Yeah, yeah. Rectolinear, or excuse me, rectolinear lens are now on the Phantom Three. Mm-hmm. You know, now on the Inspire One. Inspire One is out, and it just had a price drop at that point because right. they did the Inspire One V Two. Uh, I mean, there was so much going on at that time. Um, but a lot of people were arguing that the GoPro had a better image, and I'll agree. I love the 2.7K at 60 frames. Like that is still one of my favorite ways to shoot because you right. can crop down and slow down. And now you can't do that on the Phantom Three or the Inspire One. Will we be able to do that in the future? Hopefully, but we don't know. Right. Um, I just want to see 4K 60. I want to see 60p. It's coming. Yeah, I'm sure. Probably I'm, not too. I'm long. almost positive we're going to see it in AB. Yeah. yeah. Probably true. Um. And anyway, so that being said. Uh, we uh, I contacted 3DR again. Um, this guy, oh, what was his name? Um, I forget his name. Anyway, I don't think he works at 3DR anymore. Anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, he sent me another solo. Mm-hmm. So uh, I sent him my solo. He sent me another one back. S- it, it, the Parkinson stopped, but I was still getting crazy camera shake. Right. So um, I was like, well, all right, I'll take this out to a job and see if I can realistically use it for that job. Um, what the solo is good for, in my opinion, is is maintaining a, a higher wind uh, capability or, okay. or maximum wind threshold that it can handle. Um, and it was great for taking photos right. of a Right, for images it's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, it's really good for mapping because there's so many applications like Tower um, and the Solo app. There's, you know, there's a lot of great things that you can do with the Solo. Um, but for me, at the end of the day, I could not provide a deliverable to my client because of the amount of Jello that was right. in the footage. And you know, can you take Jello out and post? Yeah. Did I have an ND filter on? Yes, I did. Um, did that help? Not very much. I mean, it was it was very very noticeable. Yeah. Um, and it was to the point where I had to ask myself, can I consistently and reliably provide a deliverable to my client with this drone? Because that's how I'm going to make my decision. Sure. And yeah. one of the things that Johnny mentioned, I think this was actually yesterday. Now that we've done a couple of questions for him, from him, which thank you again, is that he needs to be versatile mm-hmm. and to be able. He wants to have one drone that he can do a lot of different things with. So it sounds like, and, and I, I guess we've known this, as opposed to sounds like, a Phantom is going to fit that mold a little bit better, if not a lot better, in yeah. terms of being more versatile, given what the Solo's not been able to do to this point. Yes, and honestly, if he doesn't have a quad yet, and he's looking to get one, you know, I would probably say get the Phantom 4. Yeah. Um, if you have the money to buy an Inspire 1, get the Inspire 1, make that investment in your business, just because it is unbelievably capable it's funny they kind of stole the whole idea of the solo being um uh, how do i say this upgradable mm-hmm. so they said you know the solo you can take the arms off and you can upgrade the motors and do all this but the inspire has really taken that to the new level because now they have three different cameras you can put on the inspire one you yeah. know the x3 the x5 the xt yeah so we just talked about the xt yesterday or whatever day it was 
I don't know. We record these someday. So Comes a blur. Fast now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, um, anyway, that being said, um, I would tell him to go the Inspire One. If you don't have the money, get the Phantom Four. Um, I just don't think there's anything else remotely. Or out even there the like Phantom it. Three Pro. Yeah, and that's the thing is if you know you are if you're trying to get in on a budget, you can still do a whole lot with the Phantom Three Pro. Right. So of course. And I mean, you heard John yesterday. He said if you're getting into thermal and don't have the money, go to fa- go to a Phantom Two. Not a Phantom 3. Right. So that would be Monday's podcast, which was 314, if you're curious about that. Yeah. So was that 314? Anyway, one of those numbers. Uh, th- I don't know. It was Monday. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> anyway. Who knows? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Sorry uh, if that's the wrong number. <laughs> guys, we really appreciate your questions. Go to AskDroneU.com. Upload those questions. We want to hear them. It's going to be a busy week. We also want to know what you want to find out from NAB. This is your opportunity to tell us, hey, I want to see this, or I heard about this, and I want to go see it. Let us know. We'll cover it for you. Come back with answers. And we'll, I mean, I would love to literally just have a list of things that people want to see and Definitely. then come back on the podcast and be like, well, Johnny asked for this and here's your answer. And, you know, so absolutely. I'd, yeah. So get them in. We, we love to hear from you guys. Definitely, guys. That's going to do it for us today. Greatly appreciate your time. Greatly appreciate those shares and those reviews. It's so important. And we really appreciate it. Anyway, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Drum. We believe that videos, images, words, and sounds have the absolute power to inform, inspire, and entertain. We are united under the virtues of safety and knowledge. We are a training community of learners and teachers who encourage and energize each other to achieve greatness. We are pilots, videographers, photographers, freelancers, business owners, enthusiasts, experts, and apprentices. We are creators. We are the Drone Youth.